following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Cam Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to conduct a full sea trial of the latest model to come from the Beneteau Group in France, the Monte Carlo 6. We've long touted the seakeeping reputation of the Monte Carlo brand, but all of our tests have been in Glasscom waters. Until now. This time we had 15 to 20 blowing across the Mediterranean with 2 to 3 foot rollers and we had plenty of time to see how she did. So let's start right out with the test numbers. The Beneteau Monte Carlo 6 has a length overall of 59 feet 9 inches, a beam of 16 feet 1 inch and a draft of 3 feet 10 inches. With an empty weight of 42,880 pounds, 50% fuel and 4 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 46,939 pounds. With a pair of 600 horsepower Cummins QSC 8.3 engines driving Zeus pods, we reached a top speed of 26.7 knots at 3070 RPM. At that speed, we were burning 64.4 gallons per hour, giving us a range of 217 nautical miles. With the throttle pull back to 2000 RPM, we reached the best cruise at 11.8 knots with a fuel burn of 26.1 gallons per hour, and that opened up the range to 237 nautical miles. Of course, for adding distance, pull her off plane and cruise at 7.8 knots where she'll produce a range of 678 nautical miles. As expected, her handling characteristics were exemplary. Let's take a look at how she responds to differing sea conditions. When operating at minimal speeds, she had a pronounced pitch that had a little bit of the swells breaking over the cap rails. She would still show a nice penetration through the waves, but buoyancy being what it is, she did have an expected rise and fall as the waves passed under the hull. Adding power brought the bow up to its 5 degree cruise attitude where things smoothed out considerably. Now the bow is throwing water about one quarter back from its forepeak while keeping the spray low enough for the windshield to remain dry. The ride also became much more stable. Changing course to bring the waves around to the beam showed a much smoother ride and a more stable one. We expected to see some rolling tendencies as the waves passed under the hull but none manifested. She simply rode up one wave and then settled down into the trough while remaining relatively level. There was spray being thrown outward from the windward side and with this level of stability we were able to open up the speed to wherever we chose while still remaining comfortable. Coming around again to bring the seas to the stern showed an even more stable ride. Again, we were able to open up the speed up to any level desired as the Monte Carlo 6 simply sliced cleanly through the back of the waves as she came down the trough. There was never any tendency to stuff the bow as her hull configuration allowed her to cleanly slice through the wave while at the same time produce enough lift to bring the bow up and over the wave to let the cycle begin yet again. More to the point, however, the following seas produced a zero wandering effect and we literally had the hands off the steering wheel for the entire period that we allowed the seas to be presented to the stern. Overall, what we've come to expect from the brand has finally proven itself to be true. These are among the most sea kindly boats we've tested. When it was time to return to the dock, out came the fenders and lines from the bow storage and we set up for an approach to the quay with a strong crosswind attempting to blow us off. With the starboard mounted helm of the flying bridge leaving the controls just within reach of the starboard rail, we were afforded a full view of the boat's entire length. Small pulses of the controls produced a smooth response that, quite frankly, was barely noticeable from this deck. Even with the crosswind, we were able to lay up gently alongside the quay with a delicate touch. Now let's take a look at some of her operational features, starting with the engine room. The engine room is accessed from a hatch in the aft deck with the ladder leading between the two mains. Inside, there's 5 feet 11 inches of standing headroom between the twin engines. The generator is located to the forward bulkhead. To both sides are the fuel tanks and sight gauges give a quick look at the levels. At the aft bulkhead are the electrical breakers and main engine panels. Air conditioning and water heaters are to the side. The ship's main electrical panel is located in the companionway to the lower deck. The lower helm is center mounted and features a deluxe helm seat with controls on both arms. The trackball to the left controls the electronics panel and the Zeus joystick is to the right. The engine controls are to a sub panel to the left of the helm seat. The wheel is mounted to a tilt base. On the panel, a separate display touchpad is to the left of the helm. Rocker switches are further to the left. To the right is the engine display and the bow thruster control. The aesthetics of the helm are also outstanding with a mix of rubberized coating to the display module and Alpi wood with stitched leather to the lower panel. A settee to the starboard side allows the guests to enjoy the same view as the host operating the boat. A massive single piece windshield provides unrestricted visibility. The flying bridge helm is to starboard and a pod style layout has the controls to the right side of the tilt wheel. The touchscreen display is to the left with rocker switches below. Just over the wheel is the engine display. Open space to the right can accommodate a second display. 
At the aft deck, there are warping winches to both sides with 14-inch cleats leading to a pair of stainless chocks with heavy-duty rollers. Storage to the sides holds line while underway. Additional space is provided for the platform controls with space for additional joystick and thruster controls. In addition to the engine room access, we also have an in-deck storage compartment that in this case houses a life raft. Making our way to the bow, Beneteau included spring cleats recessed into the cap rails with chafing gear to the outboard side. The ground tackle runs out a stainless anchor roller under the split bow rail. Stainless steel chafing gear tops the cap rails to port and starboard. Two large cleats secure the road and behind is a vertical windlass. The lockers to either side not only provide access to the all-chain road, but also serve as ideal storage for the large fenders. On our way out to the test, our crew managed to load no less than six into one side. And finally, for those who like to have crew aboard, the Monte Carlo 6 can accommodate in the separate quarters accessed from the transom door. It includes a single berth, head, and sink. In our opinion, the Monte Carlo 6 is a superb handling boat with excellent cruising characteristics, and she's also consistent with those qualities that make a well-mannered owner-operator's boat. And that's our full sea trial of the Monte Carlo 6 from Beneteau. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.